What's going on guys, it's Heath. I'm here with another video for you guys. I'm here at Philippi Creek. I'm actually about to launch and, and go fish the creek. It's a little bit windy. Um, you probably can't hear that. I have the dead cat on the camera, but it's a little windy. It's actually a beautiful day out. I think it's like 73 degrees or something like that. But I've been getting a lot of requests on what's on my kayak, what's on my basic setup, um, and things like that. So that's what I'm gonna go over today. Okay, so the first thing I do is take off the straps. I've got two straps on this kayak and they're fed through these little eyelets um, that I built onto my trailer. So here's one. Second one's back here. And I'll just throw those in my Jeep. Then what I do is I mount my two cameras. So I have two cameras on board, actually three if you count the DSLR that I'm recording with right now. I've got just one GoPro, this is the Hero 3, and then just the Sony Action Cam. So <clears throat> the GoPro goes right here in this starport. And then the action cam I actually put in the back right over my left shoulder. So next what I do is I get my seat up and ready. This is actually a modification. This is a 2014 Hobie Outback. It doesn't come with this raised seat. So actually what I did is I built a new system. I took a Jackson seat, which is funny, I put a Jackson seat on this Hobie out, out back and I think a lot of people are doing that. Um, so basically it's just back here. So basically what I've done is I've taken a two by four um, right here and I can lift it up a little bit and I've attached Yak Gear uh, paddle clips in here and I've drilled that into the two by four and I just covered this two by four in like this non-slip. Um, it's actually meant to go behind showers when you're building a shower. Uh, it's like a non-slip kind of material here. So that's the back portion. For the front portion, what I did was, I used to have this deal right here, I cut a sh uh, one of the straps from my backpack and I fed that strap through here and then opened up my hatch and uh, had the strap in there. Basically what that did was, it would keep my seat from going backwards. Um, recently, I was hanging out with my buddy Robert Field and I know Christina Weber turned him on to some of these uh, gear ties here and he had a few in his trailer, he threw them to me. So now what I've done, instead of having this strap here, I basically just took these um, old uh, uh, hooks right here, or these, these eye holes right here that the, that the seat used to strap into, and I've just put my gear tie, and I've held it in, this thing's rock solid. These are actually supposed to be like, like roof rack things, um, <laughs> where you put your kayak on, on your roof rack, but I've just taken these paddings, and I put the seat on top. So basically what that does, it just protects my kayak, it raises the front just a little bit, about an inch and a half, but, but most importantly, it protects my actual kayak from getting any dents from me sitting or, or any pressure and things like that. So that's why these are here. It doesn't look the prettiest, but I actually like it. It's cushioning and it raises me up. So hey, to each his own, this is what works for me. It might not work for you, but this is what works for me. I just wanna give you guys a little bit of a closer look to the star ports that I have on my Hobie Outback. I have two, um, one's holding my fish finder uh, right here. Uh, these are two in the front, I have more in the back, but the two in the front, one's holding my fish finder, one's holding my um, Railblazer camera boom, and it's just very simple to use. So you unlock it by pushing this, this little piece forward, and it just comes right out, and then when you're ready to put it back in, all you gotta do is put it in and lock it back in place. That's about it. Right now, um, I customized cut uh, this, this mat here. I got it from Yak Gear. It's coming out soon, so be on the lookout for that. Um, but yeah, man, it's pretty simple. Sometimes what I do is I'll throw a rod holder or a rod tube, a Yak Gear rod tube in there. Um, not all the time. Sometimes I just sit my pole in there depending on what kind of fishing I'm doing. If I'm offshore, I definitely like to have a rod tube, um, a, a rod launcher, whatever you want to call it, right here in this hole. Moving to this back portion for just a second, what I have here is um, from Yak Gear, I have one, uh, I guess you could call it like a rail mount right here. So I think this one's the six inch piece. I have a few more. I was thinking about extending it to 12, but I really just have no application for that right now. So basically what stays on here, I don't have it today just cause I, I don't want to listen to music today, but I normally keep a, a Red Fox wireless speaker right here in this, in this rail mount. Sometimes what I'll do if I'm fishing offshore or just when I want another rod holder back here and I don't want to use this one right here, I'll put, I'll just connect a, a, a Railblazer a rod holder right here. So that's what I like to use in this back portion. Again, I could extend this another six inches, but I just, I don't have a use for it right now. So I'm just leaving it open and clear. 
So right now we're at the back of the boat. I have a star port right here. And this one doesn't get that much use unless I'm in a, a really trafficked area. Maybe it's on a weekend. Um, but this is where I put my visibility kit. This is where I put my uh, flag that I got from yakgear.com. It goes up. Um, it's just an orange flag that goes in right here. And again, here's the back. Here's where the Sony action cam is set in this star port right here. And I don't always keep that here. Sometimes I'll put a rod holder. Sometimes I'll put uh, something different. But the cool thing that I like about these is it's interchangeable and it works very, very well for me. This is the last side of the boat. Um, just real quick before I start setting up, I just want to show you the very last thing that's, before I take this off the trailer, I want to show you the last uh, crucial piece to this setup naked, where there's no gear, nothing on here. Um, and it's basically my, my anchor trolley. So I have it running from the back, about a foot from the back, all the way to the, to the very front of the boat. And here I have an anchor cleat, um, a zigzag cleat, uh, zigzag cleat and obviously for those of you who kayak fish um, you know how this works it's a little tangled right now but the reason you want it from the front to the back is basically if you're fishing in wind if you want to fish with the current and things like that have your anchor all the way to the back that's why I have it all the way here my first kayak that I had only had it from like right here to right here and that didn't really make sense because what was happening when I was fishing in the wind the water and, and the waves just kept hitting the side of my kayak so I started to research and ask my friends when I first started kayak fishing, said, hey, I'm having this problem. They said, listen, um, on your next boat, you just need to have it from the very front to the very back. That way you can fish um, in the wind or you can fish with the wind to your back or whatever you decide to do. And just real quick while I'm at it, I already did a review on my kayak trailer, but I built on this section for my Hobie Outback because it was, it, my Hobie Outback is a little too heavy for these standard um, little kayak holder deals right here. But I do have a set of them just in case I do have a friend that wants to go kayak fishing with me and they have a kayak and we just want to go up together. So that's why I've kept this on. I don't have a second kayak right now. I sold my wife's kayak. Um, but for now, it's just going to stay there so when I go fishing with friends, they can just throw their kayak on there as well. Okay, so at this point, we're ready to go ahead and get the kayak off. So what I've got is my sea tug right here. And a lot of people do this differently, but what I try to do that try to crate a little, little bit. So what I'll do is I'll just do that notch right there and then that notch. And what I'll try to do is walk this under my kayak. One of the first things I throw in my kayak is this kayak liner, hatch liner that comes with, well, it doesn't come with, it came with my Hobie. Um, they were gracious enough to toss it in. But in here I keep things like different lures, like let's say Monster 3X lures, or an extra pair of fish grips because <laughs> I've lost one before and sometimes it's good to have two. I have an emergency kit in here. I have a first aid kit. We've got things like a stringer, um, different types of hooks and, and just sunscreen and an extra leash. Don't ask me why I have baby wipes on here. You don't need to know. I have a few extra things like some gear ties on here, but you never know what you're going to need. Um, a lot of people who see me kayak fish or that don't kayak fish already, they say, well, why do you need so much gear? Why do you need two or three fishing poles? Why do you need cameras? Why do you need these things? Why do you need a fish finder, depth finder? Um, well, all these things play a big role on my setup, and you don't need all these things to get out there. Just just over the years, I've acquired new ways of doing things. Um, any good uh, boat captain or, or charter fisherman would have a lot of these things on their flats boat or, or offshore boat. You need a lot of these things on your kayak if you do a lot of kayak fishing. You might hook yourself, and you need to, to break that hook off. You might need to put some Neosporin in a Band-Aid and, and um, disinfect uh, your cuts and things like that. You know, I don't have to be filming, I don't have to be recording, but since I do, those require extra things like, like a camera, like a Pelican case to throw batteries on board, 
or a dry box to throw batteries on board or whatever it is you're going to need. Um, you're not just going to need, if you do this consistently all the time, you're going to need more than just a few things. You need an anchor because you're going to drift away. Um, you need, what else do you need? You just need all kinds of random things that you don't think of needing until you're out there fishing, whether it's offshore, inshore, whatever you're doing. You're just going to need a bunch of different things. So that's why I just keep randoms in here uh, at all times. So let's throw that in the front. Okay, next what I have on my setup is I have a Duracell. This is a 12 volt. This powers my fish finder. And this is, okay, I'm, I'm a high quality guy. I like high quality things that can last me a long time. But I definitely took a shortcut on this and I plan on fixing this soon. But I store this in this box. And um, for those of you who don't know what this is, this is a, a Huggies, this was my son's. This is a Huggies baby white box that I've drilled holes in and kind of done a DIY and I've stored this battery inside this and then this goes in the hole of my kayak and um, the connections for the fish finder are in there. So let's go ahead and install that. Okay, before I close my hatch, um, I have this in my hatch. And inside here, this is just a quick medical kit, just in case I don't have time to really go in the front hatch or whatever the case is. Um, and this has come in handy. I've been out with a few friends before where I've made a few mistakes and I've cut my finger and I've just needed quick access to some, some medical equipment like bandage and gauze and things like that. It happens guys, so it's better to be prepared in here. Um, what I also have, because I have electronics on board, I have things like electrical tape. Um, I have a pair of these cutters to do some um, on the water cutting for me or my friends who start to have some electrical problems. We can solve those issues um, right away. If we need to strip some wire and redo some things real quick on the water, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, I also have some things like leader in here um, that don't fit in my main tackle box and um, just a few, little, a few little things here and there, a few uh, weights that I was just too lazy to throw back in my tackle box, but that's what's mainly in here, so let's throw that in. So next what I have is my crate. Um, this is my DIY crate, I have a video on that. Basically, I have this latch here, and this latch will come off and open up my crate, um, then I can latch it again. In here, what I normally keep is my lunch, a uh, squeeze flip reel, I have my fish grip in there, my rod holders are right here on the side with a pair of pliers and scissors. Um, if I need them, which I normally don't, I'm norm normally wearing my line cutters rings, but just in case, sometimes I need my pliers, but I don't always really need my scissors. Um, in here, I'll keep a cast net if I need a cast net for the day, so let's go ahead and install this. Next, I have my three rods. We're not gonna get into the rods right now, but basically the rods just go in the rod holders. You guys know that drill, so let's do it. Okay, next thing I have here, I have three things. I have my net, I have a ruler. Um, this is where I like to measure my personal best or if I'm fishing a tournament, and I have my paddles, or my paddle that just hooks on to the side of my kayak. So let's go ahead and install these. I keep a leash on my paddle at all times. So next we have two uh, extra rod holders, or they're not extra, um, these are actually just extenders. And then I have my anchor. The reason I don't have my mud stick today is because the waters I'm fishing, though I can use the mud stick once I do funnel out of the mouth of the creek, um, I'm gonna try and fish the creek a little bit and if I get there, I get there. I don't really need a mud stick. It's a little deeper in the creek, so I just brought my, my regular five pound anchor. So let's go ahead and install these things. It seems I've lost 
a carabiner, so hang tight. I didn't even pause the video for that. I always keep extra things handy. You just never know when you're gonna need them. Next, I have my Hobie drive, which is very important to have for a Hobie. And I have my just lure tackle box. And I know you guys saw this in the video already, but my fish finder is already mounted. It just stays there like all the time. So let's install these. Lastly, I have my Optrix case to hold my iPhone. I've got that from yakgear.com as well. And I have my Pelican case right here, and this holds my DSLR, any extra batteries that I need, um, my microphone, a GoPro, Sony, just any extras goes in here. So let's install these. This is just my basic setup. <laughs> Actually, it's not that basic. There's a lot of things on here. I should say this is my normal setup for when I'm fishing right here in my own waters in Sarasota, whether I'm fishing a creek or a bay. This is my average setup. This is what I normally take just about all the time. When I go offshore, things change. I throw a longer leash on there. I throw another, a few more rod holder extenders or a railblazer rod holder or something, but a few things change. Um, I have my vest. It's in, it's in the hatch. I'm going to take that out when I get on the water, but other than that, Inside there, I should also mention, I do have a whistle, so I am compliant. I have my life vest. I have a whistle. I have means of getting attention in case I am in need. I do have a knife on there. I do have a stringer. Um, those are just the little things that might be in my hatch, but the actual gear, the, the, the biggest stuff, that's my main setup, man. It's just the kayak, the wheels, the pelican case, my seat, my GoPros, my fish finder, my, my tackle box, my rods uh, and reels, my ruler, and... Guys, that's basically all you need. And you don't need the most expensive things to get out on the water, you really don't. I started off with a lifetime kayak. It was red, it was 200 bucks. I then moved to a field and stream, a 12 footer. And it, that actually had like a little um, trolley on it, an anchor trolley and a few rod holders that came with it. If I could give a word of advice, it would be this. Don't buy kayaks that are already pre-rigged, like from Bass Pro or something like that. Just get a plain kayak with nothing on it. Go, go in the water, just go in your living room, your garage, sit in your kayak and just start to move around. Just go like this and say, all right, <clears throat> if I reach this far, is this where I want it? If I reach this far, is this where I want my rod holder? And just start to just play around. Don't get things that are already pre-rigged and pre-done for you because you that might not work for you. It might not work that the rod holder is like three inches away or the anchor trolley is too low, you can't reach it. So go ahead and get a plain kayak and just go ahead and rig it yourself. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Comment on this video. Let me know what's on your kayak. Um, send me some links of, of your, your setup and things like that. I'd love to see it. I'd love to post it on Yak Tribe um, and things like that. So it's finally time for me to get on the water. It's taken a long time to make this video. It may not seem like it. I just had to keep moving the camera, but I'm here. I'm ready to get on the water. So I appreciate it, guys. I'll see you, I'll see you next time. Monster 3X right there.